Hi, this is the uh, project we're going to work on today. It's a box to store your game cards in. We love to play gar uh, card games in our home, so this was uh, a lot of fun for me to create. And I put card games on the front of it. It's just one of those magnetic boxes from Michaels that I painted over what was on it. Um, a lot of fun. I think you're going to enjoy this. It goes really, really fast once you get the design on there. It, it's just a super fast project, I have to say. And I think you're going to love it. So uh, give me some feedback. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe, please, um, if you're watching on my YouTube channel. And um, I appreciate every one of you. I especially love hearing what you have to say about it. So let's get started on this fun project. to get started on our surface uh, first of all I want to let you know what I am painting on here this is a box that I bought at Michaels and it's one of those ones that opens up it's magnetic holds it closed here that's exactly what this is only a different size so all I did to prep and prepare this surface so it would hold my design and my paint was to cover it first I painted on one coat of interior exterior gray primer so I just went to uh, Lowe's and got some primer and I had them tint it like a little bit darker than gray sky and that's what I use for painting on top of these boxes because it kind of covers the pattern you can put one or two coats on here depending on how dark the paper is and uh, cover it and then I mix gesso in with my black paint so you can mix equal parts or you can do two parts paint one part gesso just as long as you've got some gesso in there or if you have black gesso just cover it with black gesso that would be just fine um, so you can get your um, really good coverage on your surface here so um, the card box that I'm making and I pick specific games that my grandkids like to play card games and so I just put some uh, different cards on here based on the kind of games that we like to play so if your family likes different games you can put you know like old maid or whatever you can put that design on here so I just got some of the cards out and kind of co copied what was on here except for the spoons that had way too much going on so I just kind of made my own thing up there <clears throat> so but we do want to try and base coat in our colors on here to match our cards. So I'm going to start with my Uno card is the first one that goes here. So I want to transfer, which I should have left this on here, I want to transfer on the white part of my design. Make sure I get it all lined back up on here. See if there's any of the other ones where I need to add. Okay. All right. So I'm going to transfer on the white part of my design here. I'm just going to draw down through here. And I'm not going to worry about the letters for now. I think we'll come back and do those separately because. I think it will be too hard to try and paint around them. Now this one over here is going to be black where the letters and these things are so we can, eh, I don't think I'll draw, I'm just going to paint the whole thing on there black. Okay, and then the skip bow one's going to be all white so we'll paint it all white. So we, we basically want to put our um, colors in here. So these two are just going to be solid white and then this one, the outer part is going to be white so we'll get some white paint out here this one I'm going to undercoat it with um, I think uh, light buttermilk maybe because it's I'm gonna make it a, a different color so we'll get a good size flat brush out here and a round brush 
Oh, that, that wasn't white. That was light buttermilk. <laughs> okay, well then, I'll paint that one in with buttermilk. So we're just going to use a flat brush here. And these, I'm going to get a much larger brush for these, I think. We'll be base coated in with um, white. Much larger brush. So, let me find a half inch brush here. Well, actually, this is a size 16, so that will be a good size. So, we'll base in our white here, and it will take two coats to cover up our black here. You can paint your um, surface any color that you like, whatever appeals to you. It will go well with the cards that you're putting on it. So just take your time, try and make your cards straight lines here. And base them all in. I'm going to finish this one I'll go off camera and do that one. Two coats is what we want. Add a little bit of water to your paint so you don't you're not putting thick paint on here. So that's our first kind of rough coat in there. And then, so this one out here, I'm going to get a round brush that is a little bit big. We could probably use a um, filbert type brush, which I might have to use since I can't seem to find my round brushes. I feel like it should be right here in front of my eyeballs. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I got it. No worries. No worries. Okay. Uh, it's a four round. So with this one here, this one will probably be the easiest card to paint here. We're just going to fill in around the center because the center is going to remain black. So just follow your lines and fill it all in with the black paint. Okay, and then this one here, I'm going to go off camera and get the, the base coating done because it's very simple base coating. Um, thin your paint a little bit, good brush. This one I am going to undercoat with light buttermilk and then I'm going to come back and put a different color on top so when we come back I will do that with you. Okay, I'm going to try and match some of this background color here. I don't know how close I'm going to get or how well it's going to look. I may end up painting back over the whole thing completely. So this is blue violet. So I'm going to put this on here. Now I wanted to point out too that um, I mixed the gesso with my black paint. But gesso will suck the water right out of your brushes very quickly. So getting nice smooth coats on here is going to require, unless you base coat over your gesso stuff with just black paint, it's going to require a little bit more coats of paint because it just will take the water right out. So I'm going to give this a quick coat of this blue violet and I'm going to let it dry And then we're going to come back and work on top of this. I probably could have used a little bit bigger of a brush, so I wouldn't have to be working so hard. As I always say in many of my videos, a bigger brush, you will work much easier. You don't work so hard. And here I'm not heeding my own advice. I just grabbed a brush and took off with it, not even thinking about the size of it. All right, we want to get all the edges. We don't want any of that light color showing. Okay. 
It looks pretty choppy, pretty yucky. <laughs> so I'm going to let that dry and we're going to come back and uh, work on that some more. So let me get it dry real quick. Okay, I've got this dry. So I'm going to get a bigger brush here and pick up some of our blue violet and apply it on here. And now I'm going to go into get a little bit of lavender on the edge here. And go along. I want to have both those colors on my brush, so double load your brush. going to blend with that blue, of course. That's okay. We just kind of want this subtle on the edges out here. Oops. Got purple on the wrong side of my brush there. Try that again. working wet into wet here so I just stuck my hand in it. That's never good. That means it's going somewhere else on the design. Come up and touch my white up there on that one. To touch my black up there on the edge of that one. Boy, I'm just going crazy with these two colors. Keeping my line straight at all. All right. Go back up here to the top where I stuck my hand in it and took it all off. I have never struggled. You'd think I just drank five cups of coffee. Okay. The blue here. All right, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to come back and repeat it because that looks pretty darn crappy right now. And I won't touch up my white here or here until... Um, I'm done painting that next coat on there. But I will touch up my black here. Just kind of touching up some places there until I can come back and get a second coat on that. And then I'm going to touch up on that white and that white. Okay, after this uh, blue violet dried, I was not happy with the color. So I'm going over it with bright blue. This is one of the colors we're going to be using somewhere else on here. So we'll just make it work here. And I'm already liking that a lot better. That blue violet was just way too dark. So I'm going to get it base coated in with the blue violet, or with the bright blue. And it may take a couple of coats on here to cover up. And we'll come back and put the lavender around 
the edge out here. That's going to look so much better than that blue-violet. So I'm going to go off camera and get this finished base coated. It may just be need one coat after it gets dry. I'll see how it looks, but I think one coat might just cover that up pretty good. Okay, so while that dries there, I'm going to touch up on my white out here. here on this one. And a little bit of wood touch up it looks like. Right there. Okay, we're going to start going ahead and painting in some of our elements here and let that one get good and dry. I'm going to get my easel up here and see if it's going to work so I can keep it closer to my eyesight here. We can see it a little bit better. Okay, we're going to um, base in the UNO letters with white. So go ahead and do that. Probably take two coats to cover up the black. Just use a good round brush and take your time. Thin your paint a little bit like I said earlier. It makes your base coats go on much smoother. This is just a basic little fill in here. So you just outline and fill in basically. I feel like that O was quite shaped right, so I reshaped it right there when I put my paint on. always come back with your black and touch up if you get any of your you know lines not the way that you like them okay so over here on look at the skip bow and skip bow it's blue on the letters and I'm going to go down to a smaller brush for this one again I'm just using a small this is a number one round. So we'll go into some of that blue and we'll base our letters in. So if you can outline them first, then that just makes filling them in very easy to do. Try to stay right on your line so you don't make the letters any bigger than what the pattern is. And again we can come back because it's white behind it. We can touch up any white areas that we need to to make any corrections. So we'll just continue on here. to this K here. A little bit of water there. If your paint's not flowing off of your brush, then you don't have enough water. 
should just come off nicely. Not thick and globby, not runny and transparent, or not at all. That's definitely when you need some, some water. So I'll go in and fill the rest of the letters. And then over here on this one, um, it's just going to be fill in with black. And I think we might do a little bit of aging and wearing down of these cards so they're not so bright. Or if you if you like them where they look like they're brand new cards, then you can keep it that way. So we'll just fill in over here. A little bit too much water in my, my brush here. Got a wild hair there. I think I need to cut that wild hair off. Yep, a little bit too much water in my paint because it's a little bit too sheer. So, definitely we'll need two coats on this one. Okay, and the little ones over there are black as well and your letters everything's black on this one so I'm gonna finish out my letters here even this circle right here is blue so I'm gonna finish out all of my base coats on my cards and we'll come back and add our purple around the edge on this one all right I've got a couple of coats on all my lettering here but I realized that I painted in the whole circle here and I needed a um, part of it to not be painted in. So I'm just going to draw it back in and paint it black. Okay, these lines down here are going to be painted in with um, our country red. may not be straight on here at all. I'm going to go right up to that blue. And I'm just going by the width of this brush, so any lines that it doesn't cover I will erase. This is the number one round, and I'm not giving pressure on my brush. I'm just gliding the brush down the line that I painted. A little bit more paint here. I ran out of paint. there I pushed too hard on my bristles made a mess I have to come back and clean that up with some white and then this one Ooh, that's a fat one okay might fatten this one up just a little bit oh I made that one crooked look at that got on my blue Card. They are pretty fat lines on the card, so I'll fatten them up just a little bit, and then I'm going to have to come back with my white in between them to straighten them out. Okay, so our Uno here has red in the letters. So let me look at the card. It's flat. Just come straight down it. Take your time with your lettering. Don't get in a big rush with it. Now we've got our N.
and everything to kind of stop in the same place if we can. I have to bring my white in and kind of fix the edge of that part right there. Okay, let's go to our blue card here. And I'm going to double load our lavender and our blue. Well, mostly the lavender, so just a little bit of blue to help it move along there. Kind of fade out. corner. I kind of want the lavender to fade away as it goes down the card edge, or it goes towards the center. Oh, just stuck my hand in it. Hope I'm keeping you on camera with this one. Boxes are always a little bit difficult. I have to touch up some white. I want mostly blue around that edge there because you won't be seeing that much purple. Fix that corner. I've got a very large brush here. I've got a 16. It's a 16. It's a sharp brush. It's um, larger than a half inch, which is what I normally use. Around those corners. All right. So I think when that dries, that's going to be pretty good. Just that one coat of lavender will probably be all that we need on that one. So I'm going to let that dry, go back and erase my lines on these, and um, get my pattern transferred on for that one. Alright, so for our spoon card, we're going to base the letters in with moon yellow, and then we're going to come back and put primary, no, bright yellow on top of it but bright yellow probably won't cover good enough. So again, just follow your letters. Good brush, outline, fill in. And you have to have your paint thin down a little bit in order to get your paint to flow nicely from your brush. Okay, so I'll go off camera and finish those letters. Now our spoons are going to be our colors that we've used on here. So we'll have one that's going to be red. And you can pick and choose which spoons are what color. It's all up to you. And you can choose which spoon lays on top of what because I just made the pattern where the spoons are on there but how they lay across each other you can do it like I do it or make the decision on your own not getting my red to flow here very good but it will take two coats so we'll have a red one and let's see if we can get a 
blue one to show up here. It's the same color as our background color. But I think by the time we get a little bit of shading and highlighting on it, it'll be fine. It should stand out okay. And then we'll have a yellow one. And again, I'm going to undercoat it with our moon yellow. And I'm going to have it just go right over these other two. And you can just leave those three colors of spoons on there if you want to, because those are all the colors that we've used throughout the rest of the project. But I think I'm going to add another spoon on here with some green. We won't have this color anywhere else on here, so... Unless in our process of aging up our cards, we add some green tints in there somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to finish up my lettering, get everything uh, base coated with two coats. Now, uh, when I come back with my second coat on my letters, let me put some bright yellow out here so you can kind of see where I'm going here. It's a, it's a brighter yellow. So I'm just going to go over the top of them with this little bit. I'm not sure that was dry enough for me to put another coat on it yet with this brighter yellow. So, but you've got to make sure you've got your undercoat on there first. And I didn't have that on there the best, but we'll go with it. And and that's just my graphite line there, so I'll just remove that. It's kind of funny. Okay, so it's um, very simple base coating here. So when we get this done, we'll be ready to embellish and age and shade and work on everything here. Okay, all of our base coating is done. So now let's get on to adding some more uh, detail and aging these cards out. So on my spoons here, I just want to work on them real quickly. I am going to mix a little bit of black in with my blue just to darken that blue up. And I'm just going to come across inside the bowl here and up the handle like that. Okay, now I'll take a little bit of the blue. Well, I'm going to let that dry. So I'm going to move on to um, the green one. I'll take some green and add a little tiny bit of black to it. And we'll do the same thing here. We're just going to kind of scoop into the bowl and come up the handle like that. And then our red one. We can take some red and add some black to it. Our yellow one is the only one we can't add black to it, so I will get a, because it will just turn the yellow green, add a little bit of black to our red. And we're going to scoop into the bowl and come up. And we'll come back and shade along where one spoon lays over the other one. Just giving a, a little dark spot in there. And then for a little bit of highlight, we're going to take our base color and some white and really lighten it up. So, highlight is going to go around this. Side. I'm just using a round brush here because, and up and a little bit over here. Oops, weren't even on camera for that. Okay, let me try that with the green one keep you on camera. So I'm going to take some white and mix it in with my green to lighten it up. Okay, I'm going to go around on this edge. And I'm going to come up the spoon. And then I'm going to go around on this edge. Okay. Okay, for the red, let's 
Let's see. I'll add a little bit of white to it and see how that looks. And I want it to turn pink pink, but we can add a little bit of white to it to lighten it. Just a little bit. I'll go around that side. I think it's going to have to have just a tiny bit more white in it to show up a little bit better. Around that side. And then up the spoon. And then we'll go around this side. Still looks rough, I know. Have faith. Have faith. We're going to get there. Um, our yellow one, let me grab a darker yellow here. We'll get some antique gold. It may not be dark enough. Well, if I add blue to it, it's going to make it green, so. I'm trying to get a, a dark color here that's not going to be green. I want antique gold. Teeny, teeny, tiny little dot of black in it. Because if you put too much in there, it's going to darken up. It's going to make the yellow turn green. So now on this one, we can just use white. And lighten that up. Okay, so for our letters, I think we're just gonna add a highlight with some white on here. So just a little bit along way too much water in my brush here so let me get that out and try that again just a little bit of highlight across the center of the letters Nothing big. You don't want to fill the letter in, that's for sure. Okay. Okay, so now for our letters, let me get some fresh black out here. We are going to outline with some black. Let's see if this brush is small enough. I might have to go to a detail liner. So on the cards themselves, the, the whole letter is outlined, but I think I'm just going to do a, like a, a shadow around them on just one side. So I'm just going to take my black and too much water in my brush again. And outline on the left side side of the letters. Just a simple little outline. You don't have to do a whole lot with it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and outline the spoons as well. So I think it will help them look a lot better. Maybe if I can follow my pattern lines here. Just using a one round step on the tip of the brush. It helps if your paint is a little bit thinner, close to inky consistency.
If you would prefer to outline these with a pen, with an archival waterproof pen, you could do that. Okay, I think I'm going to have to come back with a little bit of my original base color and put some of that back in here. I feel like I lost just a touch too much of it. And a red one. Kind of got my light color a little bit farther over than what I wanted. And blue. And our yellow. Okay, let's add a white highlight on our spoons. Just a little comma stroke. Do it from this direction, it might be easier. And get the tip of my brush round, not flat. And again, you can go to a, a detail liner here. We already the yellow we had already highlighted with some white, so okay. I'm gonna brighten up the white on my letters here. I think that'll finish our spoons for now till we get it aged out there a little bit and look a little rough and old. Um, on our skip bow one here, um, okay, so on this card up here in this blue circle, it has a fancy little S and a B on it. Well, I'm not going to worry about making it that fancy. And I'm going to use a jelly roll pen. Hopefully, when I varnish this, it will not come off because I've never used one on my project before. So I'm just going to go around inside the circle, and then I'm going to make an S and a B inside here. And I'll just do it on the other side, go around inside the circle, and then make an S and a B. Not as fancy as what is on the card, but I think it kind of gets the job done. So that's what we're going to do to that. So now it's ready to be aged. These two, these three actually are done and ready to be aged up. Actually, all four of them are done. I don't need to do anything else to this one. So now we're going to go to the aging process. Let me wide angle out so you can see all four of them. We're going to go to the aging and making them look a little more worn. Um, and then we're going to put game cards on the front of our box. Okay, let's do some aging on these cards here. So for the outer edges of the cards, I'm going to um, get some a sheer float of lamp black on my brush. So when you make a sheer float, you got to have some water on your palette, clean water. Get your paint little bit on the very toe of the brush. Use whatever brush you like to use and then I work it into my brush along with that water. I'm going to pick up a little bit water, a little bit more water, 
and just continue to work it until it gets pretty soft there on the yeah palette paper. And we're going to come in and add some of this onto our edges and really kind of dirty them up and make them look like they've been played with a little bit. This is just the first step here. Just putting a little bit of this on our edges. Keep your mop brush handy so you can kind of blend that out and make it look really See, I got a hard line there. So we can even add a little bit of this. Let me get some more water on my brush. I've been here on our letters. You know, these have been handled, so I don't know about your cards, but ours are looking pretty beat up, so. But we like to keep using them. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here with our playing cards. Add some very soft floats of lamp black. And use my mop brush to kind of, that kind of got a little bit wider than what I want. I'll come back and drag some white on there. We'll be doing that here in a little bit. I'm going to make them really kind of dirty on the corners, I think. Dirtier, I guess I should say. And we want to go ahead and shade a little bit where one lays on top of another one here. pretty choppy and messy. Don't try to be too neat about it and make it too smooth. So first I'm going to shade around this card and mop that. That's about the only place you want to have it a little bit smoother. So around the edges. We don't really have to do the whole edge so don't feel like you have to. The corners we kind of want to you know definitely make the corners a little more dirty, dirty looking. plenty of water in my brush so it keeps it wet so I can get in there and mop it and kind of move it around. Okay, we're going to add some of this on our dark card too. Our spoons card. I might have to use a little bit more paint on, on this one to really get it more kind of scuffed up look. Don't want any hard lines. See that's see that right there? That's a hard shadow line. Or float line. I don't want that. So take the water edge of my brush and soften that and then add a little more paint back in there. We don't want it too dark on, on this card so that it blends in. We have to have it a little bit darker than the other cards. That's all there is to it, but we don't want it to fade into the background. Okay, so now we don't want to um, be afraid to go in here and, and add some of this onto the cards itself. So I definitely need more water there, so let me dampen that. And then I'm just going to take my mop brush and kind of move it around, make them look a little used and worn. 
on here. So it's a lot of water there in my brush. And just kind of tap some of that paint in. Then use my mop brush and kind of blend it out there a little bit. And I already put some on the letters here, but I'll put a little bit more. We can come back and add more in wherever we wherever we feel we need a little bit more darkness. We can we can definitely add that in. So I think these are looking pretty good. Let me add a little bit of wear and tear in here on this one with some dark color. Ooh, maybe not quite that much. I need a little bit darker for this, but. My mop brush kind of on the outside edge of that puddle there. Uh, let's put some up here. I think this needs to be a little bit darker down here, so. really kind of faded down in there. My corners are definitely going to have to be a little bit darker as well on this one, this particular card. Let's get some down here. We didn't put any on this edge at all. Put a little bit down there. I feel like it needs another little dirty spot in here. Okay, they're looking pretty pretty rough and dirty, I think. Okay. Now I want to take this brush with what's left on it and kind of add some some like little nicks along the edges just by tapping on an edge you can really kind of make it look like it's super worn on the edges by doing this really scuff it up just got that tiny little bit of wash of paint on my brush so it's kind of scuffing it up and we'll do it to all of them I'm just using my finger to kind of blur it out. Oops, wrong way. Okay, that kind of really blurs that out, scuffs it up dirty 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 cards looking worn and aged okay now to finish up this little bit of aging process here i'm going to take a brush you can have it dry or damp either one i'm loading it up with some white and then offloading it so we just want to come in here and start kind of scuffing up add some of this on here 
be very gentle when you first start because you don't want to lay down too much paint. And you just would use whatever size brush that you like. I think I've got an eight flat here. This one really just needs to be in the black and this one here because you can't see it anywhere else. This will be mostly on the letters. Do a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more scuffed up on there. well worn. A lot like our cards. And like I said, you can you can leave them looking like brand new cards. It's totally up to you and you would just have to shade where one lays on top of the other one with a little bit of lamp black. But I think that finishes those out really nice. And I think once you varnish that, they're going to look like real cards laying on there. Um, so for the side, we're going to add some lettering. So I'm going to go get it transferred on here, and uh, we'll come back and finish this out. Okay, I've got my letters transferred on here. I didn't quite get them setting on the line there, but I'm not going to worry about it. I drew a line on there so I could put them, but um, didn't quite uh, <laughs> get those letters on there. All right, so I want to make a, a little bit lighter blue than we used up here. So I'm just going to take my blue and mix some white into it. You can use just the straight blue if you want. And this is what I'm going to um, paint mine in with. So these are pretty easy letters. You can outline them and fill them in. They're kind of pressure and release letters. I might need a little bit wider brush here. This is not quite filling in the letter, so let me get a little bit bigger brush. See if this one's gonna work or be too big. Okay, so start up here, give your brush pressure, 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 pressure. Come up on the tips, up on the tips, follow your shape, and then release. Then come from here, up on the tip of the brush, and give it a little bit of pressure and join that one. I have a little bit too much water in my brush, I think. Then here, a little bit of pressure, and then I'm just going to fill this in. Should be a pretty easy um, fill-in kind of letters. So you could just outline the whole thing and then paint it in. Pressure, come up on the tip, release. And we'll come back and erase all of our graphite lines. I have a video um, on my YouTube channel that shows um, lettering. So if you need some tips for lettering, you could go watch that. I'll try and, if you're watching on my YouTube channel, to be sure and have that link up there. Get lots of pressure right there. That's a fat letter. Just break it down into strokes. Don't don't think about it as the whole letter there. Just kind of filling in a, a shape. That's all you're doing. And I'll probably come back and put a second coat on here, but I'm going to erase my graphite lines after I get this first coat on and it's dry. And I think I'll do a little bit of a drop shadow around these letters as well. Okay. 
This is really a pretty fast design to do. Um, it's a little more tedious than some of my other ones, mostly because of the details on the cards. But um, it really is pretty quick and a very fast way to get a very cute box to keep your card games in. to the mix. That letter looks a little lighter than the other ones. Alright, round my brush out because this is a pretty small place right there. I don't know what size this brush is because the stuff is worn off but I'm going to guess it's probably a five round. But you use the brush that you are comfortable using in the space that you are painting. But don't get a teeny tiny little detail liner to try and fill these in. You'll be so frustrated by the end of it. Learning to paint with a little bit bigger brushes makes your painting life so much easier. Alright, one more letter here. I'm going to erase my graphite lines, give the letters a look. I may not want to add a apply a second coat on here. It depends on how they all look. Okay. That looks pretty good. Alright, let me get this dry and erase my lines. Okay, I got it's dry, erase my lines. That was just one coat and I think it looks pretty good. So um, I'm going to put a little drop shadow with white around them. This is totally optional for you. If you don't want to do it, then don't. I'm just going to outline on the left sides. Thin my paint a little bit here. Make your brush round so that you don't have a bunch of so your brush doesn't become a flat brush. You want to keep it kind of round for doing this. give pressure as I come down the fatter part of the the letter I try to put more pressure on the paint so it matches bit of water in your paint. You've got to have it a little bit thinner. I like to pull towards me. So I just think that gives me a little bit more brush control here. So just try to look at everything that that's on the left. A little more pressure here, up on the tip and release. A little bit more water in my brush here.
pressure where it's fatter. So one tip I can give you that will probably help when you're doing drop shadows like this. Let me zoom in so I can show you. So like where that one started, this one directly underneath it will start here. <clears throat> where that one ended is where that one will end. So they kind of line up. Where your start and stop places will line up. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I really think this box turned out adorably. I can't wait to varnish it because it's going to just make those cards pop and stand out. You want to varnish with a artist sponge. Dampen it first. Two coats. Smooth it on. You can do each section one at a time if you want, if that makes it easier for you. Um, and then it's ready to load with your cards inside. And display wherever you want. But this will be great for uh, the grandkids because we can just grab this box and we'll have all of our cards in here and we can just pick whatever game we want to play. Plus we like to play some dice games so we could put some dice in there. And another use for this box is if you like to play dominoes you could paint dominoes on the top and then put all your dominoes in this box and you'll have a very cute decorative box for your dominoes. Alright, I hope that you all enjoyed this. I can't wait to see your paintings of this project or your particular card games that you like to um, play on your box and um, post pictures. Um, I love to see what you guys do with my designs. If you're watching on my YouTube channel, please give me a thumbs up. Look for the iCards in the corner for um, any other videos that will help along with this, like the lettering video. And um, select the bell at the bottom underneath the video so that you get notifications whenever I have a new video. Um, 2018, I'm trying to post uh, at least one video a week, so um, it may not work out that it comes to one video every week, but at least two videos a month is what I'm, I'm definitely going to go for. So thank you so much for painting with me. I can't wait to see you guys on the next one.